there is always going to be the next one. However, today we're going to be going back a bit as we're going to be looking at Nintendo's original 3DS console that I managed to get for just $60. First, let's have a look at that screen that was such a big deal when this device first came out. And the reason that this screen was such a big deal is the fact that it was 3D without the use of 3D glasses. But in 2017, wow, is it ever out of date, sporting a resolution of only 800 by 240 pixels, which is lower than most budget smartphones today. But it's not all about resolution, as the main new feature from DS to 3DS was obviously that 3D display. Now at the time this was a great innovation in the way that we played games, however it appears that this may have been a little bit of a gimmick as when I asked the question do you ever use the 3D on the 3DS, almost everybody said no. However, this might not actually be a bad thing as this console's battery life is significantly increased by the low resolution. I decided to see if this console's battery life could last an entire day while I was playing Pokemon Auras and this is what happened. Yep. And sure enough, at the end of the day, I still had plenty of battery life left on this console. Not to mention its phenomenal standby preservation. I can leave this console on for weeks with the lid closed and come back to it finding that it still has charge left. Without getting too technical, the main screen has a max brightness of 147 nits. And this is extremely low considering the iPhone 5S has a maximum brightness of 500 nits, but again, this does mean that the battery does last a lot longer. But the 3DS isn't one of those consoles that is about the specs. It's also not the reason that this console is actually my personal favourite. Now, the reason it's my personal favourite is because of Nintendo's incredible support. The 3DS supports the DS, so that's literally 13 years of backwards compatibility, which is awesome, meaning that I can still play all of my favourite DS titles on my 3DS. And it's the same with the Wii, the Nintendo Shop really is incredible in how it brings all of these old titles that would usually be locked onto the older consoles to newer consoles, so that you only actually need one console to play all of these incredible games. It's a feature fairly unique to the Nintendo ecosystem, or at least to this scale. Now I know Nintendo did release the new 3DS, however, there aren't really actually that many games that can only be played on that console as opposed to the older version. And this is a fantastic feature to the Nintendo ecosystem that neither Xbox nor PlayStation do with their ecosystems in terms of compatibility. Now, the reason that this device isn't more popular is highly due to the developments in smartphones over the past few years. There's a huge market for portable gaming on these consoles with some huge titles such as Animal Crossing and Pokemon, both from Nintendo. And of course there's also the Switch, which may actually end up killing the 3DS line altogether. Now this is highly due to the fact that it's both a portable and stationary console. However, for now, the 3DS does still stand a chance, as games are still being released for it, with the exception of the main Pokemon games, so the Sinnoh remakes are almost definitely going to be on the Switch. Another fantastic thing about the 3DS though, is just how accessible it is. This is easily one of the cheapest consoles on the market, and as I previously mentioned, I got mine for $60, but the new 3DS is only $150, a whole $200 cheaper than most other consoles. So in short, the 3DS is out of date, underpowered, about to die, but I also can't recommend it enough right now, especially for some light portable gaming. Thank you for watching, remember to like the video, if you want to see more content like this then please subscribe, there's one thing left to say and that is goodbye. Also, the 3DS did have wireless charging a whole six years before the iPhone.